Uh, so the idea behind this sessions, these sessions is going to be to uh, to just to start the day, uh, to ease you into the day with some softer practice. We, we always start everything very, very softly, and then gradually, we're just going to go more into stretching. Uh, if we need to divide it, it's going to kind of focus on, on the hips, a little bit of spine work towards the end, and some shoulder work. We're going to spend a, a long time within this zero point, which comes after sort of stillness and body scan. Uh, zero point is, you can consider it as a sort of uh, mobility or, or warm up, uh, but it's also a good opportunity to see uh, what your current energy levels are. I don't know uh, where Eleanor or Rory, where you are, is it morning where you are currently or the evening? So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's still, it's still very useful, okay? If there's going to be any any questions during session, just be free to let me know. Uh, I'm, it's very hot here in, in London, so I open the window a little bit. So if it's going to be noisy, let me know, okay? So you just need no equipment. You just need a mat. Uh, ideally, you're going to be barefoot. If you have a mat, it can be also on, on the carpeted floor or normal floor. So that's fine, okay? So we're going to start. So find yourself in the standing position. So feet comfortably apart, soften your knees. Relax your posture. And then just allow yourself to close your eyes softly. Bring the awareness into your body. Gonna spend a few moments here. Try to bring your awareness to your breath. Notice levels of tension in your body. Notice if you have any pain, perhaps. And you can start scanning your body from the top of the head all the way down towards the feet, segment by segment. Try to relax your jaw without opening your mouth. Think about relaxing your shoulders, your arms being long and heavy. Relax your belly. Notice any tension in your lower back. Soften your knees. And notice how much tension are you using to stay in this upright position. Try to find the least amount of tension or effort in order to stay upright. Feeling the gravity in between the feet and the floor. And then before we continue, we're gonna do three times deep long inhalation in through your nose. 
and then let it go. And again. One more time. And then you can gently open your eyes. You can slowly bring your feet slightly further apart, slightly further than your hip width. Soften your knees. And then what we're gonna start with, arms completely relaxed, just gently starting to rotate from side to side. And each side looking behind yourself, keeping your arms like noodles, super relaxed. And keeping your feet grounded, touching the floor. And depending on how you feel, you're either, either going to start making big rotations or it's going to be very small. Either is good. And fade out. Next one, you're going to connect it to your breath. You're going to inhale as you're reaching up, inhaling through your nose. And then you're going to exhale as you're lowering down, rounding your spine, going into forward fold, softening your knees as much as you need to. And then again, you're going to roll your spine as you inhale again in your own time. Exhale. And then inhale again. Always rolling your spine, softening your knees as much as you need to. And the last one, you're going to stay in the standing position. And then shuffle your feet even wider apart. Make sure to soften your knees as much as you need to. Place your hands on your lower back. And now you're going to draw big circles with our chest and soften your knees as much as you need to in order to go deeper. So you're going to pick a direction. Then we're going to make as big circle as possible. In this top position, if you wish, you can arch a little bit if you want to stick to one direction for now again connecting it with your breath Don't rush. Change direction.
And the last one. Beautiful. So you're gonna shuffle your feet back, hip width apart, and then you're gonna slowly roll your spine into forward fold. And then just spend a few moments here, your head relaxed, your shoulders relaxed, soften your knees, especially if you have tight hamstrings, soften, soften your knees as much as you need to. Yeah, I, I'm gonna stay in this position static, or you can gently sway from side to side, completely relaxing your neck muscles. And then allow yourself to go all the way down into the squat in as deep squat as you can go. And just get, get used to the position, perhaps weight shift from side to side a few times. Now, now left hand, right ankle, left shoulder, pushing your inner part of your left knee out as much as you can. And then reaching up with your right arm, pausing for a few seconds. And shift, same thing, other side. Keeping your hips slow as much as you need to. But if you need to lift your heels a little bit, if your ankles are tight, that's fine. Shift again, back to the first one. One more change. Beautiful, nice. Now you're gonna place your hands in front of your right knee. You're gonna straighten your left leg. And now you're gonna help yourself with your hands as much as you need to. You can keep the heel lifting off the floor. The idea here is to keep your hips as low as you can as you slowly transition from side to side. Maybe pausing in one position for a few moments. Again, help yourself with your hands as much as you need to. Lovely. So now we're going to go in this deep lunge. So let's say everyone is on the same page. So left leg is going to be forward in this position, right leg fairly straight, right hand supporting on the side. Just allow your hips to sink down as much as you can. And now left arm, you're going to start drawing these big circles while keeping your hips low. One more. Same thing, other side. Give yourself a few seconds to switch. So hips sinking down. And then let's go with the arm as far as you can. Always being aware of your breath in through your nose. And the last one, beautiful. And now you're gonna sit into Seiza. So shins together or maybe slightly apart. Your toes are tucked, they're not tucked in, they're straight. So you're gonna sit on your heels, just maybe get used to the position if it's tender, if you're not used to it, giving front of our ankles and quads a bit of a stretch. This feels okay. We're gonna start leaning back gently. You can always help yourself with your hands. Pausing for a second or two. Then you're gonna lean forwards, then tuck your toes, and then sitting on your heels. This might feel more intense on the toes, so be mindful of that. And then keep switching between those two.
If you experience shins lifting off the floor a little bit, that's fine. Last one, beautiful. Now let's just shake our wrists for a bit as we're in this kneeling position. You can set, sit cross-legged if you wish as well, if this is uncomfortable. So we're just gonna go sideways with our wrists. Up and down. Beautiful. Now fingers together, hands touching each other, and then slowly, come a mistake here, people just tend to rush, really take your time, notice how far can you go in each direction. And then change direction, if you haven't. Lovely, and come to a stop. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna focus a little bit on the hips so we can stay in this seated position. So we're gonna do simple 90-90. So the way I like to do this one is to try to keep my torso upright. If you need to help yourself with your hands, be free to do that. I wanna be slightly further apart with my feet as I'm shifting towards one side with my knees. So I might show you from this angle so you can see better. Now I wanna rotate my torso as much as I can so my chest is facing inner part of my left, left thigh. And now either I'm gonna help myself with my hands as I'm pulling my belly towards my quads, feeling the stretch at the outside of the hip, pausing for a few seconds, or I'm gonna lift my arms off the floor depending on how energized or strong I feel. I'm gonna pause there for five to six seconds. I'm gonna lift my torso up. As I'm seated in this position, I'm gonna to turn towards the opposite leg, my right leg. And while keeping my torso upright, I'm gonna to try to lift my right foot up for a few seconds in this internal hip rotation. I feel a little bit tender and then lower down. Then I'm gonna simply transition towards the other side doing the same thing. So we're gonna spend, let's say a minute here. So really take your time to do each side. So first lowering down, let's give it a go. So lowering down, helping myself with my hands, driving with my belly, then torso upright. Facing towards other leg, lifting the foot up. And again, smooth transition. Each time maybe going a bit deeper and deeper if you can. And always, as you're going deeper into stretch, focus on exhale. Let's do 20 more seconds.
plus six. And come to a stop. So if you notice certain imbalances between sides that are completely normal, especially with hip internal rotation. Okay. So next one, we're just going to focus a little bit on balance as balance is one of the first thing that goes away, especially as we're getting older. So we're going to stand upright. So you're going to have a simple task. Each side is going to be 60 to 90 seconds. So your foot is stuck to the floor of the balancing leg. Keep the knee soft. Keep the other leg up in the air. So for the duration of the time, 60 to 90 seconds, we'll see how it goes. You're going to simply start exploring the space around with your free leg, okay? Keeping it very soft. So you have all this area where you can go. If you lose your balance, allow yourself to lose your balance. If your balance is very good, if you're really good with this one, think about start moving the head as well as your leg as well, okay? Just challenging your balance, mobility and strength. Let's give it a go. So choose your first leg. Foot is stuck to the floor, not shuffling. So ease yourself into the motion. So slowly start. Think about shapes being as smooth as possible. Going up, going behind. Notice how I need to use my torso to counterbalance. I can help myself with my arms as well. So my foot is stuck to the floor. My knee of the supporting leg is soft, but still strong. Any more seconds? Beautiful. Let's transition. Same thing, other side. Prepare. And let's go. So start slowly. And then gradually build up. So you're going to do two rounds of this combined with the hip drill that we did earlier. So if this first round always serves as you as sort of easing yourself into the motion, the second round you can go a little bit crazier. Try to make the motion continuous, almost like you're drawing shapes in the air. Being aware of your breath, as always, in through the nose. Ten more seconds. And come to a stop. Beautiful. Everyone okay? And notice where you feel the burns. You might feel it in your calves, maybe your hamstrings, maybe your lower back, and so on. So let's go back on the floor. So we're going to do one more round. So it's up to you how you want to do this one. So if you want to spend a few extra seconds here, that's fine. With this one, as you're lifting the leg behind, Always try to turn your torso. It helps maybe if you turn your arms as well as you're pushing the knee into the floor and your foot up. You might even notice a little bit of cramping and that's fine. Uh, tip for cramp, just try to ignore it as much as you can. I know it sounds silly, but it works. Okay, prepare. Let's give it a go. So perhaps now second round, you're not gonna use your hands as you go down. Smooth transition as you're transitioning with your knees, keep your torso upright. Belly to the inner part of the quad. Your adductors. Okay. 
Hopefully, in this second round, it feels a bit smoother now. Fifteen more seconds. Six more seconds. And come to the stop. Beautiful work. Lovely. Let's go into our standing. So let's make, let's make it a bit more challenging now, this other round, even if the floating leg is fairly static, try to move your eye gaze. So move your eyes slowly or move your head around the space, which is gonna put you off balance, but your body is learning the most when you actually try to fail. So if you lose balance, step down rather than doing this, okay? Allow yourself to fail. Prepare. So let's give it a go. So just gently moving the head around the space. Don't rush. If the free floating leg moves a little bit, that's fine. Arms are there also to counterbalance. And notice how this already affects your breath. If you're like me, I'm already starting to tense up in my midsection. And I wanna prevent that. So looking down, behind, up. Twenty more seconds. And slowly fade out. Beautiful work. Hopefully this was a bit harder. Same thing, other side, let's go. If you want even slightly even more challenge, you can start making sudden unexpected movements with your head without planning or thinking too much. It's okay if you lose balance, but really try to fight for it. Your toes gripping the floor. Just be aware of your environment. Last 10 seconds. And fade out. Beautiful. That was really good. Okay, so now we're moving slowly towards our spine and our shoulders. So first task, you're gonna have two things. So first task is gonna be this. So you're gonna be in this sort of kneeling position. So your toes are tucked in, your knees are on the side, your hips are as far back as you can as your arms are forward. So you wanna have optimal distance here, why? As you're gonna start lifting your hips up, now we're gonna do a little bit of spinal segmentation. So think about this, as I'm lifting my hips up, I'm, I'm tucking my chin to the chest, I'm rounding my spine, and then as I'm lowering my hips down, I'm keeping my arms straight, and then starting to arch segment by segment. In the end position, I'm gonna keep my shoulders depressed, so pushing downwards. So it's gonna look like this. Chin to the chest, rounding, squeezing my abs, and then depressing my shoulders, pushing downwards, looking up, and again, just start, start the motion with your chin, going back, so rounding, and then like a wave, Unraveling, okay? So that's gonna be the first one. 
Second one, you're gonna go on your belly. I'm gonna show you from this angle. So you're gonna do this. You're gonna start with your shoulders being internally rotated, uh, almost like you wanna scratch your shoulder blades. And from there, you're gonna go from internal rotation into external rotation, thumbs facing up. So on the floor or on the mat, it's gonna look like this. If you need to lift your head a little bit off the floor, that's fine. And your feet as well. Up as much as you can. Back. Up as much as you can. Okay, so you have two motions. So let's start with our uh, wave first. We're going to do it for 40 seconds to one minute. Let's see how it goes. Prepare. And let's go. So hips low. And then hips high, tuck your chin around your spine, connect it to the breath. Squeeze your glutes in this arching position. And no need to rush. Fifteen more seconds. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go on our bellies first, straight away. And from there, we're gonna do our mini shoulder sequence. If you wish to keep your forehead on the floor throughout, that's also fine. If you wanna just isolate your shoulders. Prepare. And let's go. So keeping my thumbs in this top position up and then rotating in. Last 10 seconds. And fade up. That was good. If you want to have a sip of water, you can. I'm going to have one sip of water. Very hot here in London. And then we're going to do one more round. Hope everyone is okay. <laughs> so just remember with this wave, you want to have your feet and your hands in optimal distance. So that means. If you sort of stay here and you can't lower your hips, that means your hands are too close to your feet. So go as far as you can. So you actually have space to move, okay? So let's go into round number two. Prepare, so hopefully again, it's gonna be a bit looser. I'm gonna give you one more option. As you go in this bottom position, if you feel the need, like you wanna look over your, one of your shoulders to have this nice twist and stretch, you can for a few seconds, one side, other side, then going back. I think it feels very nice over there as well, okay? Prepare. Let's give it a go.
15 more seconds. And come to a stop. Beautiful. Let's go on our bellies. Return. And let's do our last shoulder sequence. Really take your time, don't need to rush. Last ten seconds. And count to a stop. Nicely done. Awesome. Okay. Hope everybody's feeling okay. So the next one, I would say the last one in this sort of strengthy part, uh, not just strength, we're also stretching as well. We're gonna go in our basic tiki or let's call it high cowl position. So basically you're in downward dog. So now it really depends how much space you have. You're gonna move forwards, backwards, sideways, uh, any direction you have space to work in. Think about opposite arm, opposite leg. So I'm here, opposite arm, opposite leg. Keeping my hips high, keeping my feet as close as I can towards my hands. So stretching my hamstrings. Okay, so we're gonna do this for one minute. Prepare. Let's give it a go. Keep it as soft as you can. Actively pushing through your shoulders. If you wish to pause in one position and then just relaxing your free limbs, you can. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Think about being as graceful as you can be. And fade out. Beautiful. We're going to superset this with horse stance. Okay. So, horse stance, the easiest way to, uh, when I'm explaining uh, people who are new, for example, always say go as wide as you can with your feet. So, you go with your thighs as parallel as possible to the floor. Okay. Uh, at some point, you're going to notice how your knees are collapsing in. So, think about keeping your lower back arched. And lean a little bit forward is if necessary. Okay. We're not going to stay statically in this position. So arms are going to be here for counterbalance. So as you're in this low position, you're going to gently bounce up and then you're going to go down. Each time, lean your torso forward in order to have a little bit more uh, depth. Okay. Drive the knees out. Let's give it a go. So just almost like you're gently bouncing. A pause for a second or two in each position. It's almost like you want to make it as effortless as possible. As you're going down, so torso goes forwards, knees out, arms completely relaxed.
Twenty more seconds. Beautiful. Nice. We're going to go one more time on the floor straight away. But instead, our chest facing the floor, now our chest is going to face up. So almost like a crab position. So think about this as I'm sitting here, my fingers are pointing behind, more coordination required. So squeezing my shoulder blades, opening my chest. I can keep my hips low as I'm doing this. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Keeping my chest nice and open. Moving from side to side, forwards, backwards, and so on. Softly, prepare. And let's give it a go. Opening the chest. Squeezing my shoulder blades together. Try to challenge yourself by going side to side. Think about contra arm, contra leg. Thirty more seconds. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. Let's go one more time in our core stance, core stance squats. And then we're going to finish with a little bit of shake. Prepare. So remember, as you go down, don't allow your knees to cave in, drive them out. Prepare. And let's go. Arms can be on the side if you prefer, or in front. I always like to have the feeling almost like I'm hugging someone. Feeling the stretch in the hips as I'm lowering down. Twenty more seconds. Last ten. And fade out. Beautiful. Nice. So we're going to finish with a simple shake. All that tension always need to go somewhere. So in London Movement Group, on all our sessions, we always, every session, we finish with some sort of shaking. So we're going to keep it simple. Uh, we're going to do it in line position. So first one, you're going to lie on the floor. You're going to lift your legs up in the air. The arms are on the floor. And then just start shaking any direction you prefer. Knees in and out, legs up high, going from your hips, going from your knees, going from your ankles, whatever feels OK. Go crazy, but keep it soft. Beautiful. Now place your feet on the floor and simply shake your knees left and right. And already simultaneously, you're sort of trying to ease your breath in through your nose, long inhalations. Lovely. Now you're going to straighten your legs. Think about pressing the heels into the floor as with your 
feet is simply going up and down. And this is going to cause, if everything is connected nicely, it's going to cause this ripple effect throughout your body. Okay, so ideally, you're going to notice this nice shape throughout. Let's give it a go. You can notice the shake and the motion, hopefully all the way up to your back of your head. And then gradually, don't just suddenly stop, just gradually, gradually fade out. And then you can close your eyes and just allow yourself a few moments in this lying position. Feeling all tension just melting away into the floor. And then for the end, you're just gonna do one long inhalation in through your nose. And let it go. And then you can open your eyes, wiggle your way off the floor. Nice. Thank you all so much. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> So this is sort of format that's going to be uh, on these sessions. Every session, uh, there's going to be uh, some changes, obviously. Uh, we're going to focus on different things, but I, I kind of want to cover everything, always shoulders, spine, hips. And rather than uh, keeping it a very light stretching session, I always like to add a little bit of strength work, but not, keep, not making it super strength to you as it's sort of uh, aimed for start of the day practice or maybe evening practice. So hopefully you feel a bit looser by now, a bit better, ready for the new day. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. If you have any any questions, you can uh, let us know. Uh, if not, yeah, see you, see you next time. Take care, everyone. <laughs>